golden thread and needles so fine. I'd weave a magic strand of rainbow design. Cried ring around rosy London bridges falling down. Boys and girls together, me and Mamie rock. Dance the light fantastic on the sidewalks of New York. Everybody's heard this song, I guess. Just like everybody's heard of New York City. That song was used by Al Smith as his campaign song when he ran for president in 1928. And I can remember it. And the subject of tonight's program is really New York State. I was thinking everybody knows New York City, but they forget there's a state with just about an equal population up north of it. Now, if you go out into the Hudson River and were to go up north, go past the Palisades, and the river widens out there for about three miles wide at Tarrytown, and it gets narrow again around near West Point and Bear Mountain. Very deep, deep, deep channel. And uh, then it widens out again up near where I live, up near Beacon and Newburgh, and it gets narrow again. You can, there are tides all the way up to Albany, 142 miles further north. But on the way up to Albany, you'll pass a beautiful range of mountains on the left, Catskills where Rip Van Winkle lived, supposedly, and all other kinds of things went on. And there it is that an old friend of mine, a school teacher in the city, he and some other teachers uh, started a summer camp some years back. And they wanted these city kids to know a little more about the countryside than they usually did. All too often, city people go to the country and they just look around them, see some trees, and say, hmm, trees. And they don't realize that people have been living in that countryside for hundreds of years and they have a wonderful history, old songs and stories and ways of living which are unknown down in the city sometimes. So this friend of mine, his name is Norman Studer, and you'll meet him in just a minute. That's how come I got coffee cups out here to welcome him and another friend. Norman Studer started a folk festival in the Catskill Mountains and every summer, he'd take the kids around, and they'd search out all the good fiddlers they could find, and square dance callers, and storytellers. And once they had a fellow there who knew how to make these old wooden scoops, and he'd t uh, take a birch log, and, and in a matter of a few minutes, he'd whack out a beautiful bowl or something. Well, uh, as a result of getting the neighbors uh, to come around to the camp, the country people got a different idea of the city, too. Because, uh, face it, an awful lot of country people are rather bitter against the city. Well, uh, here's, uh, here's an example of why. As a farmer who lives across the river from me wrote this song. When first I came to this valley A many a long year ago I thought each day as I labored Of making those red apples grow of making those red apples grow, of making those red apples grow. Thinking each day as I labored that someday I'd make me some dough. I sprayed them and sprayed them and sprayed them from early in spring until fall. 
Those trees were so loaded with apples, you couldn't see green leaves at all. You couldn't see green leaves at all. You couldn't see green leaves at all. But what did I get for those apples? A penny a pound for them all. I've raised in my time enough apples to feed the whole state of New York. But I've never had enough money to buy me a good roast of pork. To buy me a good roast of pork. To buy me a good roast of pork. Yes, the apples are raised in the valley, but the money is made in New York. Oh, sad but true. And a lot of country people, when they see batch of cities, city people uh, enjoying themselves out of summer of resort, they say, look at those rich people, people from the city. They come up here and have a good time, but we just keep on working, working, working. Uh, they're a bunch of city slickers. And the city people look, say the country people are all hicks, and the country people say the city people are all slickers. So my friend Norman Studer decided that this folk festival could bring them together, and it did. Kids at the summer camp would sing some songs, and the local people would sing some songs and tell some stories. And the people in that town and that whole Catskill region really loved that camp. Uh, one of the songs which one of the local people sang is one that maybe some of you have heard of. Uh, I don't know where he learned it, this local person. I've found out since it's an old American song. But it became the hit song of the camp. Putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the young folks are doing all the while. As I look around me, I'm very apt to smile to see so many people putting on the style. Young man in a carriage, driving like he's mad with a pair of horses that he borrowed from his dad. He cracks his whip so lively to see his lady smile, but she knows he's only putting on the style. Hey, putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the young folks are doing all the while. As I look around me, I'm very apt to smile to see so many people putting on the style. Sweet Sixteen goes to church just to see the boys, laughs and giggles at every little noise. She turns this way a little, then turns that way a while, but the boys all know she's only putting on the style. Hey, putting on the agony, putting on the style, that's what all the young folks are doing all the while. As I look around me, I'm very apt to smile, to see so many people putting on the style. Young man in the restaurant smokes a dirty pipe, looking like a pumpkin that's only halfway ripe. Smoking, drinking, chewing, and thinking all the while that there is nothing equal to putting on the style. Putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the young folks are doing all the while. As I look around me, I'm very apt to smile to see so many people putting on the style. I think this uh, phrase, putting on the style, comes from way back in the days when ladies wore corsets. And they'd had to lace them up so tight. Someone said they ought to take the agony out of putting on the style. Preacher in the pulpit, shouting with all his might. Glory, hallelujah, puts the people in a fright. You might think that Satan's coming up and down the aisle, but it's only the preacher putting on the style. Putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the young folks are doing all the while. As I look around me, I'm very apt to smile to see so many people putting on the style. Well, that song left the Catskill Mountains. The kids took it back to New York. And people like me and others learned it from them. We took it all around the country, and they know it in 
all 50 states of the Union now, wherever there are people like to play guitars and banjos. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to ask my friend Norman Studer, the New York school teacher. Well, he didn't start in New York. He was a came from a Mennonite family out in Ohio, I think, somewhere. And, and then maybe that's why he's got a good feeling for the, the country as well as the city. And he's going to bring with him a friend that I met up there in the Catskills. He was a quarry man, digging stone out of the mountainside. And Norman Studer and the kids found that he was a good fiddler, good singer, and he made up songs too. So Norman said, "Let's. Uh, how about Grant Rogers, you come down to New York and be on this television program. Uh, of course, Grant is no longer a quarry man. Uh, there's a story to that, too. The reason he's no longer a quarry man is that, uh, well, I'll start, I'll tell you with a song again. The faucets are dripping in old New York City. The faucets are dripping and oh, what a pity. The reservoir's drying because it's supplying the faucets that drip in New York. They're dripping away. And New York City decided they needed a new reservoir. And there was a little town called Cannonsville it was right in the bottom of the valley where they wanted to build a reservoir. Well, people in Cannonville, I don't suppose they were enthusiastic about the idea, but as things ended up, every one of them had to move, including Grant Rogers, the man you'll see in just a moment and hear sing. Now he's living in a trailer. He uh, works for the conservation department, outdoor work, and uh, he doesn't mind it, but I'm sure he sometimes wonders about his old home there under the water of the Cannonsville Reservoir, supplying water for the faucets that drip in New York. Well, instead of me talking about his songs, I'll let you meet him in just a moment. Grant Rogers, the upstate New York fiddler and singer, and Norman Studer, my old friend, the school teacher. And they'll be right here. That's what we've got the coffee cups out for. Friends, I'm sitting here with Mr. Norman Studer, head of the downtown community school of New York City on my right. And on my left is Grant Rogers of Walton, New York. And we're here to swap some stories and some songs. And there's a fiddle sitting over there. Maybe we'll hear some of that before we're through. But before anything, Norman, a little while ago, I was telling folks about your folk festival, and you'd shown me some little teeny snapshots of them. That's right. So I got the people here at the station to blow them up into big pictures, and thought you might like to look at them. Oh, yes, that's the ski slope at Phoenicia. It's a wonderful place to have a festival, right out in the open. And there's the, the fiddlers in the background and the dancers in the foreground. And, Grant, if you... Here's you, the first time I think you ever came to the festival. Off there on the left. Oh, off, yeah. Off yeah. there on the left. I there remember. you are. I fiddling remember. away. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> and at the festival, beside music, you remember the summer you had a, a fellow? It was uh, Dick Edwards, wasn't it? Yes, that was Dick Edwards. And behind him is George Edwards, from whom we got just hundreds of songs. He was a remarkable person. What, uh, what is exactly is Dick Edwards doing there? Well, he's making a scoop. Uh, to begin with, he has a rough, slivery piece of wood, and in about a half hour, that's a nice, smooth, beautifully shaped scoop that can be used, and was used in the old days, for scooping sugar in a store, an old grocery store. Oh, me. I wish we could get him to show it on the TV program. But you told me he died just a year ago. That's right. Oh, me. I wonder if he taught his skill to anybody else. Well, I don't think there are many scoop makers left in the Catskills. And one last picture, Grant. You might like to see this one. This is of... Oh, yeah. That's my uncle there. 
isn't it? That's right, and that's the water which eventually yeah. now has risen and covered the whole that's town. Right. That's the yeah. west branch of the Delaware, right. and there's about a hundred, would you say a hundred feet of water there now? Well, Grant? there might be that. Yes. There or there, be, will be there will be when the drought is over, yeah. right? That used to be a great place for my uncle. He used to love to go down there and fish along the stream there. Yeah. Like like many of your family, he was part Indian, wasn't That's he? Maybe right. that accounts for I his love so. of going out I, there I in the woods. Yeah. It could be, you know. Well, now, Grant, I haven't asked you what you're going to sing. It's up to you. Whatever well, you like to. <clears throat> Pete, suppose my ears oh. went to a little song that comes in mind when a fellow was out of a job with a little back up there on the banjo. Okay, let me see if I can get a key. From her heels to her hair When the fellow is out of a job She is all out of killer Beyond all repair When the fellow is out of a job Ain't no juice in the earth No salt in the sea No ginger in life In this land of the free And the universe ain't what is cracked up to be When the fellow is out of a job When the fellow is out of a job And your kids have big patches All over their knees And the fellow is out of a job And them patches you see Look as big as the sky They will blot out the landscape And cover your eye And the sun can't shine through Well, the best it may try When the fellow is out of say that, uh, and I think you'll back me up on this, Grant, that uh, Grant has two sides. This is the out of the Catskill side. He was a workman who traveled around doing jobs, and uh, much of his music he picked up here and there in the United States. That's one side of him, and the other side, a great big chunk, is uh, uh, the part that has its roots in the Catskills, the old traditional song, so that... Uh, you know some of the old ones? Well, uh, I know some traditional songs that came in the Catskills, such as, uh, you know, uh, up and around in the Catskills, the way it is, there's uh, the, the songs are brought in there. There's a few people that originated. Now, I'm one there that I write songs, you know. Well, there's, there's very few of us kind of guys, and maybe it's a good idea, you know. <laughs> but there's uh, songs that comes in from traditional, like Irish songs. Maybe here one that you'll pick in the oh, key, of, key of A there. With it. There's a slow thing called uh, Down by the Glenside, Irish tradition. Down by 
at a glimpse I I saw an old woman picking wildflowers. She ne'er saw me coming. I listened a while to the song she was humming. Glory, oh, glory, oh. Irish, all right. I see them again, she o'er through all my daydreaming. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to the bold Indian men. When I was a young girl, they're marching and drilling, awoke in the glen side sound. And thrilling. They loved dear old Ireland to die. They were willing. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to the bold Indian men. I passed on my way. God be praised that I met her. The lifelong or she. I will never forget her. We may have great men, but we'll never have better. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to the old Indian men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that came in the country, oh. Several years back, I, I couldn't tell you. Just Hundred years know. back, wouldn't you say? Yes, I should I think so, that. yes. Probably with the Irishmen. Yes, there are when a lot the of Irishmen. When the Irishmen come into the country yes. and begin to, you know, meet up with the Indians, that's where I come in to deal with. You part Indian? Oh, yes. My no mother food. was a full blood Indian. No my, no, excuse me, my grandmother. Uh -huh. yeah. I and think that you, story you told me about uh, swapping languages with your grandmother was a good one. Yes. You know, my grandmother, she couldn't speak, she couldn't speak very good English, and uh, she made gestures and so on, you know. And she used to learn me her words, her Indian words, which originated from the Lenapes. See? Hmm. The Lenapes became known by the white man as the Delawares. See? Well, I would learn her the English words, and she'd learn me her, or the, yeah, the English words, she'd learn me the Indian words. And, Oh, we got along good. My grandmother was a wonderful person. Uh, now, uh, maybe, is that how come I heard on one of your songs, you know, you have a record out, one of these little recording companies, and uh, I, you've seen it before, cause, but maybe, uh, Norman, you hadn't seen Grant's record before. No, I haven't. It's put out by a little company up in Vermont, where Grant's singing some of the songs he wrote and some of the old ones. Mm -hmm. It was present for you. Wonderful. Thank you. But on the That's end wonderful. of that, it was, a, it was one of these uh, lumberjack songs, and it had a, a line in the end, how, so the white man took over the trees that the Indians once lived in. Do you remember that one? Would you like to take uh, a little of that in a key G? All right. I think, uh, Pete, you ought to know, I, I think we ought to sort of tie these things up in the sense that uh, Grant learned songs from these old timers, but he also, caught up their habit of making up songs because they did, they made up a lot of songs and uh, Grant uh, took that tradition too. And uh, th this song is one that you made up fairly recently, wasn't it, Grant? Yes, not too many long, not too long ago, maybe, couldn't be over two, three years ago, was yeah. it? Yeah. Some, well, I'll be darned, I thought this was an old song. <laughs> no, no. It's... Well, go ahead and sing. Come all you boys and gather round, I'm sure the time has come. For many times you've asked me where I've been and seen or done. Though now I'm old and tired, no more youthful can I be. I was born in that good old garden state in 1863. As a lad I roamed the shores and fished on the river Delaware. I saw the raftmen steer the logs where they came, I knew not where. So I became determined 
It was this I had to learn. Perhaps their boss would give me work, some wages I could earn. I started out one morning, me bed roll on me back. For food I took me fishing pole with hook stuck in me hat. And only when I stopped to rest was hours after dark. Don't be surprised when I tell you guys is where the story starts. Was the early days in August that I hit this logging camp. The first time since I started that I felt like heading back. But soon a man came up to me and looked me straight in the eye. Said me, I want to tell you now how I will work or die. He took me to the paying shack, says he, give me your name. And whether fake or otherwise, to me it's just the same. But you must have a handle if you're looking to be paid. Says I, I'll take me wages to the name of Pat McRae. Through me 50 years of logging, I have seen a mighty change. From a river raft to steamships to motor trucks and trains. If there's a marl you're looking for, I'm sure it's plain to see. We took the work from the red man's head and shelled it. Down, they slaughtered the timber. Well, where was the Indian to go? But on the reservation, you know. I know some of these old Catskill loggers could sit around all night, all year, telling stories about some of the times they've had. Norm, do you remember any of them? Yes, and um, think uh, talking of the old timers who made up songs, the one who was the most famous of all in that Delaware River Valley was a raftsman. And he probably rode rafts right down that little stream that we saw uh, in the picture. Not uh, when it was that small, but in the spring when there were freshets. They would ride the rafts down to Philadelphia and Easton, and uh, Boney was one of the raftsmen. His name Boney? was Boney Quillen, yes. And oh, there, there are just hundreds of stories about hi that, him. I'll give you this very little sample. There are many stories about how Boney would uh, play tricks on people. He was always playing tricks on people. And when he was working for someone, he would do exactly as the boss said, but somehow or other it wouldn't come out the way the boss wanted it. For instance, Mr. Hulbert asked him to go out and yoke up the oxen. So um, a few minutes later, Mr. Hulbert called out to one of the other hired men. He said, uh, uh, did Boney yoke up the oxen? He said, yes, he yoked them up, but they were standing on a, a different sides of the fence, and they're tearing down the fence as fast as ten men can build it. <laughs> did you ever know Boney? No, no, Norman, I never did. But was he the one that told the story about he lived on a hill where the wind always blew? Seems all that his, when he was a small boy, his mother bought four or five hundred hens. Well, they kept him in a coop for a long while in the hen house. Finally let him out, and the wind blowed him up against the side of a the barn. They hung there till they froze to death, or starved to death, or something. I don't know. Maybe he told that story, huh? Well, what happened then? <laughs> well, they just... It, in wintertime, they just took him down when they needed him? I suppose so. They went out there and got a, a, a frozen chicken any time they wanted it out there in the wind, you know. <laughs> well, that reminds me of another story, Boney. You know, these raftsmen would, would ride the rafts down to Philadelphia. Then they would come up on the railroad, and... Um, <clears throat> One day, uh, of course, Boney always spent his money uh, uh, drinking down in Philadelphia in the saloons, and he had nothing to get back on. So this time, and he always lived by his wits. He traveled by his wits this time. Uh, he got into the train, and suddenly he went and he pulled the string and uh, uh, the signal for the train to stop uh, because there was an emergency. And the conductor ran through. He said, who pulled that rope? And Boney said, I pulled it. My hat just blew out. And the conductor said, never mind. We'll have to go on without your hat. But Boney said, my ticket was in the hat. So the conductor said, ah, never mind. So that's yeah. the way he rode without pain. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Boney, <yeah. laughs> what about that fiddle? Oh, the violin? Yeah. How about that, Pete? Oh, it's sure. Yeah. It looks like it's seen plenty of use. Oh, this fiddle really has. Really has. All 
kinds of them. Not much out of me because I never was much of a fiddler. I like to stand right here with you, Pete. Okay. Put so turn that one in key in. This is a song I wrote myself, or a fiddle tune I wrote myself, in the key of G and D. All right. Grant, how many fiddle tunes did you compose? Oh, I think I've written maybe 125 fiddle tunes, mm -hmm. maybe for songs. Maybe we're close to 500, I think. Really? So Roger's real. Hey, good. <laughs> well, I had to name it after myself. Do you play for the local square dances sometimes? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. And uh, just have while we're in the mood that Pete no, just had. It. Let me try with the guitar. This yes, time. I'd like that. Uh, ah. We get the thing cranked up, see how she sounds. That one in the same key is straight through G if you want. Oh, well, I got to get a pick, pick for it somewhere. What key is it in? G. Same one? Yeah, when I get tuned up, too. out there. You can't fiddle unless you're in tune. I can, but I don't like to. All right, <laughs> gee. See the devil, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe. Did you ever see the devil, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe? Did you ever see the devil, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe? Don't mind the weather, so the window. Hop up, my ladies, three in a row. Yeah, boy. Hop up, my ladies, three in a row. Hop up, my ladies, three in a row. Don't mind the weather, so the window. Play it once again. I hope 
that uh, we uh, don't miss out on doing that one hit of uh, grants at the festival, that fabulous Delaware County Dairy uh, song about uh, the famous heifer, sort of a tall tale, Bessie the Heifer. Oh, try it. <laughs> I had no idea Grant had written so many songs. Well, he's written a lot of them, and I hope you some, write them uh, down. there are a few others that I hope we get time for, too, before the end, and that, well, let's get Bessie first. She was really a fabulous cow, and Delaware County is, is, is the place where they have heifers like that, I guess, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's a farming section. Yeah. <laughs> Dairy country. My daddy bought me a little cab for a Christmas present one. I picked a little heifer because both of us was runt. She didn't seem to make much sense, but she grew up somehow. And as for giving milk, she's an educated cow. Oh, Bessie the heifer, the queen of all the cows. She gives more milk than any law allows. In the morning she gives pasteurized and the evening gives homogenized the Bessie the heifer, the queen of all the cows. I took her to the county fair to try and win a prize. She knew just what was going on, I could see it in her eyes. Though the contest made her nervous, she tried so hard to please. But when it come to milk her, all I got was cottage cheese From Bessie the heifer, the queen of all the cows She gives more milk than any law allowed In the morning she gives pasteurized And the evening gives homogenized Oh, Bessie the heifer, the queen of all the cows I planted me a tater patch to try and raise some dough to spend a short vacation with some city friends I know. But no one here would milk my cow, no matter how I'd nag. So Pa took my vacation, leaving me to hold a bag with Bessie the heifer, the queen of all the cows. She gives more milk than any law allowed. In the morning she gives pasteurized, and the evening gives homogenized. Oh, Bessie the heifer, Queen of all the cows. In the morning she gives pasteurized, the evening gives homogenized. That's a great. <laughs> There's another one about um, the old grandfather and the tall tales that he would tell. Being a grandfather, I like that story very much. I wonder if I could do that. Maybe I could do a little of it. I don't know. Do we have time for it? In just one minute, uh, we're rolling on now, and we have time for just a few more songs. But uh, hey, like... why don't you pipe up? Oh, I'll come in later. So just a minute. Just a minute. Grant, did you uh, have somebody in mind in particular when you wrote that song about this granddad that was always telling tall tales? No, not in particular, Norman. But you know, old grand, all granddads will take their little grandsons and granddaughters and they have a, a way of telling them stories, you know. And uh, so I took it as a whole all the way around. You know, I like, see. Well, if, if I, my little granddaughter come up and got on my knee, I might tell some story like the, like the fellow telling about what all he done in the war, you yes. know? And the, he got his little granddaughter on his knee and, and telling her all what he done in the Civil War. And the little girl looking at the granddad, what did they use the rest of the army for? I see, and all such as that. <laughs> come on, sir. Come on, Pete, let's do it in key A. Just a little boy, one thing I did desire To sit up on my granddad's knee and watch the open fire And listen to the tales he told that happened long ago There was not a bad man in the West my granddad didn't know When he was boss of the wagon train ahead and crossed the plain He met a gang of highwaymen with a leader, Jesse James My granddad walked right up to them, to Jesse he did say if you all don't wish to be buzzard meat, you'd better be on your way. The only recruit in Custer's troops in duty he was sworn, and without help he saved his scalp in the Battle of Little Bighorn. 
He told about the Dalton boys called Younger and his men. There was not a bad man in the West my granddad didn't know. When pleasure bound, my granddad would ride from town to town. For miles ahead, it has been said, not an outlaw could be found. Billy the Kid took to the hills, in his hideout he would stay. In fear of his life, he left his wife till granddad rode away. Up in the hills was said to be a great big grizzly bear. The hunters refused to track him down, he gave them such a scare. But early one Sunday morning, just as nimble as a cat, my granddad danced down Main Street with a dead bear on his back. Poor old granddad, his time has come to bid farewell to all. An empty chair left standing there, his picture on the wall. I'm sure the man who tends the gate will proudly let him by, so he can tell his stories to the big man in the sky. Wonderful. <laughs> now, you know, we started out with water, and I think that uh, we ought to use that theme a little bit more, because when we went through the Catskills with our Chevrolet two-ton truck uh, with benches in the back with kids singing songs. We were not just looking for folk songs. We were watching New York City build its reservoirs, and they've been uh, going on for many, many years. And uh, uh, this was especially important because many of these kids came from New York City. And uh, Grant, you wrote a song about the building of the reservoir, and I, I think we ought to have that you as know, part of this program. In, in fact. Norman, there was a, a good many people in that locality It more or less resented the thing. They didn't stop to realize, if, you know, for the, if the, around the countries away from New York, this is our manufacturing center, you know. Well, if they don't have water in them places, where would you get your shoes and your boots, your, your jackets you wear? And a lot of things come from the city. Well, was, they need water. And the, so while some of them were resenting the, the whole story, I wrote this little song on it in the key of D there, Dr. Peter. Come and lend an ear and listen to a story sad but true. While our families, friends, and neighbors search for distant land so new. We've been told that we must leave our homes from this valley we love so dear to make room for the dam they're building here. To make room for the dam they're building here. If you ever met a little child from you, he isn't sure. If he asked you for some water, would you turn him from your door? Now like him, there's countless thousands leaning on our guiding hand. All he wants is some water from our land. All he wants is some water from our land. When the flood comes to the valley spanning miles from shore to shore, then we realize as humans we could have done but little more. There'll be many hearts that's broken among the young as well as old. For they'll never see the old homes anymore. No, they'll never see the old homes anymore. You have read of good old Moses with a rod to smite the rock. Then came water for the multitude, water for the flock. Now the same has come to us today like many years ago. We wouldn't turn our backs upon our friends. We wouldn't tell them no. We wouldn't turn our backs upon our friends. We wouldn't tell them no. You know, that's a generous thing to write a song like that. I can't help thinking, though, that everybody in the country has got to think just beyond their local selfish interests. Uh, to what the whole broad picture's got to be. I was thinking of this Hudson River, which is Isn't so... Isn't that the truth? This beautiful Hudson has been used like a... like just a big sewer. That's right, yeah. Out. Sailing down my dirty stream Still I love it And I'll keep the dream That someday 
Though maybe not this year My Hudson River and my country will run clear It starts high in the mountains of the north Crystal clear and icy trickles forth With just... Ah, uh, wait a moment, let me get... <clears throat> Grant, I gotta get in the right key for this song. I'm not in the wrong, wrong key somehow, and I can't sing it unless I, I do. I thought that sounded wonderful. Where are you now? Well, uh, 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 you see, I, I made it up without a guitar. I was sailing out in the river, tacking back and forth from one bank to the other. Here we go. Sailing down my dirty stream Still I love it and I'll keep the dream That someday, though maybe not this year My Hudson River will once again run clear It starts high in the mountains of the north Crystal clear and icy trickles forth With just a few floating wrappers of chewing gum Dropped by some hikers to warn of things to come At Glens Falls, five thousand honest hands Work at the consolidated paper plant Five million gallons of waste a day Why should we do it any other way? Down the valley, one million toilet chains Find my Hudson so convenient place to drain And each little city says, who, me? Do you think that sewage plants come free? Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear But I live right at Beacon here Halfway between the mountains and the sea Tacking to and fro, this thought returns to me Sailing up my dirty stream Still I love it and I'll dream That someday, though maybe not this year My Hudson River and my country will run clear Wonderful song. Well, wonderful Very song. Well, I know. You said you wrote that while riding on the river? Yeah, I was sailing out in the river, and I was just thinking how dirty Pete, is Pete, how it? do you do them things? That's wonderful. You know, that, that's... There's no more wonderful than your songs. Let's oh. tell you what, we got just time for one more song, and back there in the dressing room, you reminded me of one that I think almost everybody out there knows, whether you're old or young, whether you're sick of bed, or whether you're stopping in for a beer at the local tavern. You remember? Yeah. I dream good night. I dream good night. Sing it out. Good, good night, I dream good night, I dream. I will see you in my dreams. Do you know the verse? Last Saturday. with us. I Jump 
into the river and drown. It's everybody. Irene, good night. Irene, good night. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. I'll see you in my dreams. Good night, Irene. Good night. So fine I'd weave a magic strand Of rainbow design Of rainbow design In it I'd weave the bravery Of women giving birth In it I'd weave Sense of children over all the earth, children of all earth. Far over the waters, I'd reach my magic band to every city, through every single land, through every land. And my sisters, my rainbow design. Bind up this old world with hand and heart and mind. magic strand